One of the most incredible monarchs to ever reign over England was the final Tudor Queen, Elizabeth I, and her reign was said to have been a golden age across the nation. There was a huge outbreak of culture and literature, with Shakespeare writing his plays, with these even being performed inside of the Queen's court. But she was a queen who could be incredibly ruthless. Elizabeth I executed Mary Queen of Scots, the Scottish rival to her throne, who she had imprisoned for decades inside of English castles. But she even sentenced some of her favourites to death. But despite her glorious reign, Elizabeth I's death and demise was one which was incredibly sad, and not in keeping with the time she spent on the throne. Join us today as we look at the death of Elizabeth I, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Let's remember that during the Tudor period, medicines and treatment to diseases and illnesses was not very good, and there were many medieval remedies which were still being used, such as bleeding and purging. People still believed that outbreaks of disease were based and caused on religious sins, but Elizabeth I's health throughout her life was not the greatest, as she suffered from smallpox, which could have killed her. This left Elizabeth scarred on her face, and this was a constant thorn in the Queen's side, as she worried greatly about her beauty. Elizabeth I reigned for almost 45 years, and she was the last Tudor monarch, but in her final years, her health was suffering greatly, and many of her friends also died. She suffered from deep depression, and in 1590, one of her closest friends, Blanche Parry, died, and this hit Elizabeth very hard, and eight years later, her closest advisor, Cecil, died. But the loss of her friends devastated the Queen, and also in her last years, she remained as ruthless as ever, as she even sentenced her former favourite, Robert Devereux, to death for treason. But in January 1603, Elizabeth I was clearly very ill, and she was not very well at all. The Queen was in a poor mood, and she retired to Richmond Palace, one of her favourite palaces, to rest. The Queen was made comfortable, and she was surrounded by her loyal ladies and servants, but Elizabeth over the weeks began to turn away meals, and she lost a significant amount of weight. Her ladies were very worried about her, and the doctors were not allowed to see her. One final death of her close friend, Catherine Howard, made Elizabeth I become even more depressed, and it was said that Elizabeth loved the Countess well, and hath much lamented her death, remaining ever since in a deep melancholy that she must seemeth to be overtaken. In February 1603, Elizabeth was in a very deep melancholy and depression, and she was not her witty and former positive self. She had in her glorious days rallied soldiers at Tilbury Docks, and had been a vision of the goddess Athena, issuing a war cry to defend her nation against the might of the Spanish Armada. But now the Queen was a sign of ill health and depression inside of her palace, and in her last days the Queen was very upset and distressed, and in March 1603 she fell even sicker, and it was said she remained in this unremovable melancholy. She would just sit in her palaces on her cushions for hours, motionless and seemingly deep in thought. Many who witness this believe that she was debating in these moments the mistakes she had made throughout her life, especially relating to the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. Sanctioning Mary's execution led to a lot of internal debate within the English Queen, and she was very worried that this would prevent her from getting into heaven and in the afterlife, as she had executed a Queen who many believed had been sent by God to rule, and had been anointed by God to perform this office. One witness said, The Queen sheds many tears and sighs, maintaining her innocence that she never gave consent to the death of that Queen, referring to Mary Queen of Scots. She even encountered ghostly visions in her final days, and some claimed that she was visited by Mary Queen of Scots. But to those around her, they knew Elizabeth I was dying. She made her decision in March 1603 to retire to her bed, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was summoned to her bedside to pray for her. He told the Queen that she would get into heaven, and that she would reign over as a Queen in the afterlife. She had made many final requests, such as that she did not want to be disemboweled and eviscerated, 
as this was traditional for monarchs during the embalming process at the time, and this was done to keep away decay from the body. But this last request would not be adhered to. On the 24th of March 1603, Elizabeth I died inside of Richmond Palace. It was an incredibly sad time for England, as most people had only ever known one queen, and Elizabeth was so greatly loved by the population. The people of England held her in such high regard that she was buried inside of Westminster Abbey under a huge tomb in the same vault as her half sister, Bloody Mary I. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.